Hello, today we're going to be learning about how to use our UV Vis spectrophotometers. Here at Evergreen, we have a couple of different models that get used, and so I'm going to show you both of them. They are both running off of the same software, so there's only a few differences between them. The newer one, like the one I'm working with today, is identified by the buttons on the front. The power button is located just to the left of the QVAT holder. So this is what our older models look like. And these are a little different in that they don't have the buttons on the front for the blank or the sample. So you're gonna have to do that all in software. And then the other thing that's different about them is the power button is a little harder to find. So I'm just gonna pull this out and you can see the power button right here next to the power cord. The first thing you want to do is log in to the computer. Next you're going to click on Instrument 1 Online and you should go into the UV Visible ChemStation software. So you're going to want to put in the operator name science, and there's no password. So the software is up, but we also need to get the instrument online. So we're going to turn on the instrument on the power button, or this light right here tells us that the instrument is on. Once you've done that, you're going to go to the instrument tab and you're going to click on the lamp option and you have to you're given two options the deuterium lamp and the tungsten lamp we only actually use the deuterium lamp when we're actually working in the uv spectrum and we're not so we're just going to turn on the tungsten lamp and click ok now i do want to say that it takes a while for the instrument to warm up so at this point you can see that the light has turned green and that means the instrument is ready to roll. So the next thing you want to do is you want to choose what task you're going to use. So there are four possible tasks, but we usually use one of the first two, either fixed wavelengths or spectrum slash peaks. So I'm going to start by showing you spectrum slash peaks. And what we're going to do um, here it says it's looking for three peaks, and we're going to click OK. Uh, we want absorbance rather than transmittance. Um, if you want to limit the spectrum, then you're going to fill in the bounds you're sticking on your wavelengths. But I'm just going to put OK for now. And the first thing you want to do before you run any samples is you want to run a blank. And so if you are looking at something where you have reacted something, like if you're doing a color metric method, you'll want to do a reagent blank, but for now I'm just going to do a DI water blank. So this is a cuvette. We have a variety of cuvettes. This particular one holds three and a half mils. There are also cuvettes that hold one mil. One of the things that all of the cuvettes have in common is they have one side that is meant for light to pass through and one side that isn't. So in some cases, the side that is not meant for things to go through is very obviously frosted and opaque. In this particular case, there's a little arrow right here that indicates this is the side you want to put facing the light path. So it's very important that you look at your instrument and figure out where the light path goes. That is going to depend on which of our instruments you have. So usually what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to identify where the light path goes. So you can see right here, here's an opening where the light is going to come through. And if we move around this way, you can see there's the other path. So the light is going this way through the cuvette. So here we have one of our older UV Vis spectrophotometers. So if you look at the cuvette holder here, you will see that the light is not running front to back as it was in the previous UV Vis. If you look right here and I get on the other side, you will see the light where the 
light passes through. So in this particular case, the light is going through this way. So you always have to be very careful that you align your cuvette with a light path. So back to our newer spectrophotometer, take the cuvette, place it with the arrows lined up with the light path, and then flip the lever to lock it in place. There is a button right here to blank it. If you have one of the newer models, then you can just click on the blank button. What you want to see in your a good blank is that it is fairly close to a straight line in the region that you're looking at. Now, some people get a little worried when they see this part right here, because that's really noisy. But if you look at the wavelength, this is all in the ultraviolet wavelengths and we aren't measuring ultraviolet. So the reason that is the case is because plastic absorbs ultraviolet radiation. If you wanna do UV spectroscopy, you have to use a quartz cuvette. So now we want to go ahead and get our solution in the cuvette. So again, you have to hit the cuvette release lever. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pour the DI water. If you look at this cuvette, you can see there are water droplets in it and that can dilute whatever you're going to be measuring the absorbance of. So what you want to do is you want to rinse the cuvette with your solution that you're going to be analyzing. So I'm just analyzing our pH 7 buffer to see what color it is. And so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour in some pH 7 buffer, empty it, pour in more pH 7 buffer, empty it, and now I can pour in the pH 7 buffer that I'm going to measure. Now, obviously, this is a messy business. You want to make sure you completely wipe down the cuvette before you install it in the cuvette holder. And again, you look for the little arrow to make sure you're putting it in the right way. Install it in the cuvette holder. And then now, again, I have a newer instrument here that I'm working with, so I could just press the sample button on the front. But if you're using one of the older instruments, you can just click the sample button right here. Okay, so now if you look here, you can see there's kind of a mess right here where the UV spectrum starts. Um, and then there is your peak. Now, the peak finder didn't do a good job of finding peaks um, the real peak is right here at about 425. So what I can do is I can, if I want to see what the absorbance is in this range right here, maybe I can just go to the fixed wavelength thing. What wavelengths do I want to look at? Well, how about 425? So you can see there's room to put up to six wavelengths. So I'm going to click on that. And you, you can see now it's showing the, us the absorbance at 425 nanometers is 0 0.13687. So now you would repeat this with any other samples that you want to run, emptying your first sample into the waste beaker, rinsing the cuvette with the second solution, etc., etc. So if you're just getting absorbance data, sometimes it is a little easier to just write down the absorbance. But if you want to save a spectrum like this, you can go to File, you can go to export selected spectrum and what you want to do is you want to export it as a csv format and that is something that you can import into excel later okay now one of the things you have to do is you have to select which spectrum you want to export so if you have a whole bunch of spectra on your screen which is something you can do you have to click on one of them so in this case i just clicked right here so now I'm going to export the selected spectrum as a CSV. And now there are places where you can export it. So you can export it to your folder on the Orca server. Or in my case, what I'm going to do, I just have my thumb drive and I'm going to save it to my thumb drive. And that's actually the easiest. If you bring in a USB drive, that's the, that's the easiest way to save your data. Okay, now when you're done, the first thing you want to do is you want to turn off the lamps. So you just have to make sure they're both on off and click OK. And that's really important because the lamps are pretty expensive to replace and we want to extend their lifetime. OK, so now we're going to go to exit. We don't want to save the configuration or the method. So we're just going to go like that. And now we can shut off the computer. 
And now we can go ahead and turn off the UV-Vis.